Hey guys, I've been reviewing, you know, a lot of the popular Linux distros and I've reviewed a lot of relatively unknown and obscure Linux distros uh, recently. But this might be the most unknown and obscure Linux distro I've reviewed on this channel. Uh, it is not listed on DistroWatch. They do not really have a proper web page. All they have is their SourceForge page where their ISO is uh, located for download. And according to their SourceForge page, their ISO has only been downloaded 36 times. So basically, the one developer or handful of developers, probably just one person behind this project, other than that person and the 36 people who have downloaded the ISO, nobody really knows anything about Unity 7 SL. What is Unity 7 SL? Well, it is based on the upcoming Ubuntu 18.04. It is based on Ubuntu 18.04's development branch. Now, that is, you know, beta software, basically. It is a testing ground for the upcoming Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. It, Unity 7 SL, obviously, will use the Unity desktop environment. Now, you guys know Ubuntu has recently decided to switch from the Unity desktop to the GNOME desktop. Ubuntu 18.04 will feature the GNOME desktop. A lot of long-time Ubuntu users don't, do not like that decision. They've grown accustomed to Unity. They like Unity. Many of them have only known Unity. Unity has been the default desktop on Ubuntu for like six and a half years, you know, until, you know, the recent switch. So for many Linux users, they've never known anything but Unity. Where do users like that go? Well, there are going to be Ubuntu spinoffs. There are going to be, you know, remastered Ubuntu spinoffs that feature the Unity desktop. I've seen several of them out there in the wild, and this is one of them. I just came across it, you know, tonight, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a spin just to check it out, mainly because I like Unity. It's a pretty, pretty good desktop environment, and this particular Unity 7 SL is based on Ubuntu 18.04's development branch, so it gives us a chance to look at some of the early stuff in the upcoming Ubuntu 18.04 as well, so I thought why not make a video? So I'm going to install this inside a virtual machine. I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. Alright, I've downloaded the ISO and I'm loading it up inside VirtualBox. Now, the live environment may take a minute or two to load up. These live environments always run really slow. Uh, much slower than an actual physical install. All right, and it is booting us into our live desktop. All right, and the Ubuntu installer, the Ubiquity installer, pops up immediately in the live environment. Now we have the option of clicking Try Ubuntu, which will close this installer, and we get to play around in the live environment. Or we can just go ahead and click Install Ubuntu and go ahead and install the full system. That's what I'm going to do. So it's already chosen English as my language. That's correct. All right, now we have the option of downloading updates while installing Ubuntu. I normally don't do this, but I'm going to do it on this one because this is based on the development branch of Ubuntu 18.04, and the ISO was a few weeks old, so there's a lot of stuff that needs to be updated. I'm going to go ahead and take the time and do that off camera. You know, you, you guys won't have to sit here and wait for however long this takes to update. Install third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, drivers, MP3, multimedia codecs. I'm going to tick that on, too. I'm going to click Continue. And you guys have seen this Ubuntu Ubiquity installer in several of my videos. Uh, all the Ubuntu-based distros use Ubiquity. It's a really cool installer. I'm going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Everything is still... Uh, branded as Ubuntu. Again, whoever created this little spin, Unity 7 SL, you know, I'm sure it's a very small, you know, garage kind of Linux project. You know, probably just one guy, you know, made his own little custom spin and he put it out there on SourceForge for anybody to take a look at, but I doubt it's gonna, you know, blow up into the next big thing, you know, it's not gonna be the next elementary or soulless, you know, that hot distro that everybody needs to try out. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and create a user, 
create a password. And I'm going to let this installer run for a few minutes. I'll be back. The installation completed in probably less than 10 minutes. It's asking me to re reboot the machine to complete the installation. I'll be right back. All right, and we're rebooting Unity 7SL, which again is just the Ubuntu 18.04 development release or development uh, branch here with the Unity desktop rather than the GNOME desktop that Ubuntu 18.04 will ship with by default. The VirtualBox guest editions work out of the box on Ubuntu. One of the things I love about Ubuntu and Ubuntu based distros, things just work inside VirtualBox. So very easy for, you know, new Linux users to test things out, you know. All right, and this is the Unity desktop, the old Unity 7 desktop that has been around since the dark ages. Well, since around 2011, 2012. If you're wondering if Unity 7 functions correctly in, at least right now, the development version of 18.04, uh, yeah, the Unity launcher functions, uh, everything, the switcher here, plus the application menu here, say 67 or so applications are installed by default. Uh, I guess I should go through this with you guys. Let me go through the menu and show you what is currently installed anyway on Ubuntu 18.04. This obviously some things will change between now and next April and obviously uh, whoever is behind this particular ISO, the Unity 7 SL ISO, you know they have the option of switching out some of the software assuming they you know keep uh, keep up with the development of this Unity 7 SL spin. Again, it might have just been one guy, just he got a wild hair one day, decided to throw up an ISO on the internet. So, just very quickly, I'm not going to open any of the programs, but it looks like your standard Ubuntu uh, suite of software. You have your additional drivers, Solitaire, Solitaire Amazon, Ubuntu still putting that link to the Amazon web store here, which all it does is open Firefox, uh, go straight to the Amazon website. They have appearance, archive manager backups, Bluetooth, brightness and lock calculator, calendar, we have cheese, uh, we have some desktop sharing stuff, our disk utilities, Firefox of course is the web browser by default in uh, Ubuntu. We have the Nautilus file manager, the standard file manager, and the GNOME desktop. Unity uses a lot of GNOME utilities. We have our image viewer. We have the LibreOffice suite. We have uh, Rhythmbox as our media player. Uh, other notable programs installed in Ubuntu would be, you know, the transmission BitTorrent client. Thunderbird email is our email client. They're using the gedit text editor. They're using the GNOME terminal. Photoshop, I mean, not, not Photoshop, Shotwell Photo Manager. Obviously, Photoshop does not exist on Linux. We have the GNOME System Monitor. Uh, we have the GNOME Video Utility, which is uh, the old Totem video player. Let's see, properties. Yeah, anyway, let me get out of that. But yeah, that's Totem. So let me discuss some of the reasons why Unity really has become a really popular desktop environment and why a lot of users do not want to see this project die. I'm going to open up a program to, te uh, to demonstrate some things. I'm going to open up, uh, how about the text editor, gedit. This is your standard text editor here. Now you notice by default Unity uses a global menu. There are no menus here in the actual window of the gedit text editor. There's no file, edit, save, about, all that. It is actually up here in the top panel, the Unity panel. When I roll over it, you know, you see text editor and then you see the menu that in a lot of desktop environments is actually part of the window. It's up here. File, edit, view, search, tools, documents, help. Now actually, if you wanted to, Unity does offer some tweaking options. You could put this back in this menu if you wanted. Uh, I don't know why you would do that because it makes sense the way they have uh, have this laid out because full screen you notice you know you have your menu up here but you also lose this uh, top bar here this top bar serves no purpose when it merges with this panel because this panel now will include the close and minimize buttons 
So you actually gain a lot of vertical real estate on full screen programs in Unity because of this, how they have this global menu set up with the integrated window control buttons also in the panel. It's one of the most brilliant features about Unity and nobody else does a global menu with these integrated window buttons as part of a panel. You will not find this in any other desktop environment. Okay, one of the big criticisms of Unity when it first came out was a lot of people that were used to Windows or used to the old GNOME 2 desktop environment that Ubuntu had previously used. Most computer users in general are used to window control buttons being on the right side of the windows. Everybody hated uh, the uh, Ubuntu's decision to put these buttons on the left side of the windows because you got used to having them on the right side of the windows. But it makes so much sense why they did that in Ubuntu in the Unity desktop environment. Think about it. You want to injure your wrist, you want some serious carpal tunnel if you use the mouse all the time and you're constantly going from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen with the mouse, constantly going the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen with the mouse. You have all that mouse travel, you know, it's tough on your wrist, it's hard on your wrist. In Unity, you don't have to do all that mouse travel. Everything is all in one spot. It's all on the left side of the screen, it's all really on the top left side of the screen. Think about it. The Unity Launcher, top left. When you have your windows in these floating modes here, the buttons are on the left side of the window. When it's in full screen, it's in that top left corner, right next to the Unity Launcher. All your Unity uh, quick launchers here for quick, quickly launching programs that are in this left hand dock. Everything is on the left side of the screen. You never have to travel to the right side of the screen for anything. I mean, unless you need to access your, you know, sys tray here or uh, maybe the session menu here to shut down or log out, you're never going to the right side of the screen for anything. Maybe in a browser or, you know, some kind of program where you have to scroll, your scroll bars are on the right side of the screen, but if you have a mouse wheel, you don't even need to do that. For most users, you will never need to go to the right side of the screen for anything. Everything happens just right here in this left top part of the screen. It's brilliant. So Unity makes a lot of sense for you guys that are more mouse users, you're a point and click kind of person. Most computer users are, but for keyboard driven users, Unity has a lot to offer too, maybe much more so than the point and click mouse users. I'm more of a keyboard kind of guy. and you really don't ever need to touch the mouse to use Unity. For example, this top launcher here, I don't have to use the mouse to, to launch that. Super key on the uh, keyboard, the Windows key, we'll call it the super key. You hit that, there's your launcher. Now say I want to navigate through here, if I hit the uh, tab, you can see I can get to this menu and then use my arrow keys. I can tab up to filter the results, I can hit enter on filter results, I can get through all that. Control tab filters the scopes here, these little things at the bottom. Control tab, I get to applications. Control tab, I get to my folders. Control tab, I get to videos. There's none in, on this system. Control tab, I get to the music. Control tab, I get to the photos. Control tab again gets me back to the home. Uh, the HUD, if I had a program open. Alt would get me the HUD, this little drop down here where I can uh, search through the uh, program's menus. Alt F2 gets me a run command. It right now it's showing the X kill that I ran earlier. Everything is keyboard driven. Uh, again, I showed you some of the quick start uh, key bindings such as Control Alt T for the terminal. Uh, the launcher here, super key, if I hold it, you will see one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm holding the super key, super key, and if I hit one right now, it will open up the Nautilus file manager. There you go. Let me close that. If I hold the super key down again, again, I get all of this here, but I also get my keyboard's shortcut menus. You can see, you know, everything basically I've just told you is laid out here for you to, to view at your uh, leisure here. Just hold the super key and that appears on your desktop also if you forget you know the key bindings for your launchers you know it will tell you the number of the program for example one through seven 
a super plus T will open the trash. So as you guys might have guessed, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of Unity. I don't live in Unity much. Uh, I, you know, I, I spend a little time in it, but, but not much. But when I do play around in Unity, I like it. It makes sense. Everything in Unity makes sense. Unlike, uh, I've mentioned the GNOME shell. I've, I've never liked it. Nothing in it makes any sense. Uh, KDE is, is great. But Unity, Unity really makes a lot of sense. I see why there was such an outcry when Canonical announced that they were basically ditching Unity. Uh, and it was actually kind of unexpected. I didn't think that many people would be upset about it, but a lot of Ubuntu users were really upset about the decision to switch away from Unity. So, being open source software, you know, you can always take that code, fork it, run with it. And there's already uh, a movement uh, in Ubuntu to do such a thing. Ubuntu probably will have an official Ubuntu Unity remix. They're going to have a, an Ubuntu flavor that runs Unity as their default desktop environment and it will be fully supported by Canonical. This is not it. This is like some garage distro I just happened to find on SourceForge and I decided to take it a spin but I'm glad this guy did it. I mean if you guys want to check out Unity uh, running in the 1804 development branch right now. Uh, this guy's ISO, you know, it, it works. Unity 7SL. You guys might want to check it out. Give it a spin for yourself. Peace, guys.